Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Pablo, call sign uh, VA3HDL. Uh, this is part two of the DSP audio mic processor preamp and equalizer. In this part, I will show you the steps of building this preamp. If you watched part one of this series, um, you know that I got my inspiration for this project uh, from this book, Microcontroller Projects for Amateur Radio. Uh, the project is in the chapter 12 of the book. So this is um, when I start bread breadboarding the, um, the project and uh, we will go all on all the parts and um, connections and all that uh, but um, I, here i got the the original code uh, to load and um, and compile on the on the tnc uh, and um, the original code was uh, uh, created for a touch screen which is much bigger than this oled um, so I have to rewrite the entire code and also when I was in the process of rewriting the code um, I found uh, some improvements that could be done and uh, I done those so basically um, the entire code was um, redone but using the inspiration from the book. So the, the equalizer has eight bands 140, 240, 370, 190, 900 hertz, 1.3 kHz, 2 kHz, and 3.3 kHz. And this is more or less the response of the equalizer on uh, these bands. This is just for, for reference. Also, just for reference, um, this pre, uh, preamp works as a compressor. And um, if you, if you, um, I want to know a little bit uh, about uh, what that means. Uh, uh, very briefly, it means that um, uncompressed signal like this one here, that has uh, high levels of audio and low level of audio, uh, when it's compressed, the high level of uh, audio signal are uh, reduced to the threshold level. And the low levels of uh, audio signal are increased up to a certain level. So in that uh, in that sense, the um, a big range of uh, levels of volume levels are uh, now in a um, in a compressed range, as you can see uh, here on the right side of the screen. So now let me go quickly through the list of parts uh, that you need to put together uh, this this project. Uh, of course, you need a TNC 4.0. Uh, you need the audio adapter that it has the SGTL 5000 audio code, codec, uh, codec IC. Uh, you need a screen. Um, I use an uh, OLED 128 by 64 pixels, uh, which is probably the minimum that you can use for this project. Uh, you need a, an encoder with a push button or some other method to um, select the options and, and change the settings. Uh, you will need some head headers, uh, male, female, for the connections. You need a perf board, board to mount all the connections, uh, the, the tra isolation transformer and the uh, power uh, voltage regulator. You need, and this is uh, highly recommended for any project that you connect audio to the radio, an isolation transformer, 600 ohm to 600 ohm, or one, one to one isolation transformer. And in each line um, is, is um, highly recommendable to use a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor for RF filtering. Uh, you need also one microfarad electrolytic capacitor for the regulator and then uh, you have options um, you need to feed this um, circuit with five volts so you can uh, either use um, a, program, a programmable uh, voltage regulator like the LM317 uh, or you can use a five volt uh, fixed uh, regulator like the LM7805 
you you will need two um, R RJ45 jacks for the microphone input and output. That is probably the easiest way to create connections uh, when you have so many cables and, and pins. And you need uh, some uh, uh, thin wire for the jumpers and you will need uh, shielded wire for the audio jumpers. That is very important that you use shielded wire to avoid the interference uh, on the audio wires. Uh, but and the last part is the project box or that you can order or you can m make your own box like I did with a PVC uh, sheet. So now let's jump into the um, SGTL uh, uh, 5000 uh, chip and um, this is uh, basically a very high level how this chip um, works and what it has inside, right? So it has a... Um, uh, analog input. It, it has a uh, digital interface. This is the interface that uh, connects to the TNC and this is the interface that is uh, to control all the functionality in the audio codec. And um, it has also uh, an analog to, dig uh, to digital converter, the audio switch, it has a digital to audio converter, has the audio processing, and it has two outputs. One is the headphone output, and uh, the other is the line out output. Uh, now, inside the, um, the chip itself, those are the a very high level the diagram, diagrams of, um, of the block diagram of the chip. Uh, there are things that we will use uh, on this project, like for example, the mic in, we will use this and uh, we will use the input to set up uh, the gain for the microphone. Uh, we will use the uh, automatic volume control, which is here. We will also use the uh, this section, the tone control, because in this section is where it resides the uh, graphical equalizer, the eight bands graphical equalizer that we created uh, in this project. And of course, we will use the line out volume control uh, that is going to feed our radio. Now, this is uh, in, in, in this image, we have a um, block diagram of the different parts of this project. So there are uh, two inputs, um, microphone and line. I don't use line. I, I use, just use the microphone uh, input uh, that goes to the TNC uh, audio adapter which I mentioned uh, earlier uh, the TNC audio adapter is controlled by the TNC microcontroller uh, the TNC microcontroller is connected to a screen and I use only one encoder to uh, select the settings and uh, preferences and the functionality the audio adapter the um, I use only um, one output, which is uh, going through the isolation transformer uh, and that goes into the radio. And uh, you can also monitor, this power amplifier is built in on the, um, on the audio adapter and you can uh, monitor without any delays uh, with the uh, headphones. The, as you can see here, the PTT line goes straight from input to output on the connections uh, without uh, any control from uh, from the box, but but it could be implemented some kind of control if you want to um, do some kind of uh, push to talk directly from the software, for example. Uh, like I was thinking, uh, a, a possible improvement of this project is to add a functionality to generate, like a, for example, one thousand uh, hertz uh, tone. Uh, that you can use to tune to, or to force to tune um, an external auto tuner without uh, having to um, switch to CW, for example, in an old radio, right? And this is more in the sense of the um, software uh, programming of the uh, TNC. So this is part of the audio library of the TNC, where you can select the components of the audio library that you want to use in your code and make the connections. And at the end, uh, this is a free tool that uh, on the TNC, TNC website. 
uh, you can download the code to generate all these uh, connections. So this is uh, what I use, which is a modified version of what um, came with the, um, in the chapter 12 of the book with the, with the code uh, of the original project. Uh, one of the things that I change, uh, for example, is um, I add a pick mirror at the end and uh, this peak mirror was uh, originally here on the, on the original version and i move the uh, spectrum uh, output the spectrum analyzer output from the input to the output uh, because uh, to me it has more value to see uh, the um, in the spectrum analyzer the signal that you're putting into the radio rather than the signal that that is coming from the microphone uh, as a as a possible improvement uh, you can um, also add another um, um, FFT um, values analyzer on the input and switch between the two uh, to compare the input and the output uh, spectrum uh, after the equalizer or the compression. So now uh, jumping into the um, build process, uh, the hardware part, this is the microphone that I ordered for AliExpress and um, the reason I did that is um, because uh, and also the reason I built the preamp is because I wanted to get more output uh, out of my radio. I noticed that um, the original microphone um, was not able to drive the radio to the maximal output even when the, the gain of the microphone was to the max. Uh, so I thought maybe the, the microphone is too old and I will try a new microphone. So I got this one and still, uh, even with this one, um, it was not producing any difference in the um, uh, power out, right? So um, then I said I need something to, um, to increase my audio level, inject higher uh, audio levers into the radio and that at the end proved uh, true and uh, it's working because now uh, by simple talking I can push 100 watts uh, on on the output of the radio so before I created the or I built the preamp I did some modifications on the microphone to be able to test the microphone uh, that I purchased um, directly connected into the radio just to make sure it works, right? So I did that first, and you can see here, this is all the, the modifications that I had to make on the circuitry inside the microphone to make it work as the original microphone. And here is um, after I cut uh, or snip the, um, the the cable from the, the microphone that I purchased, and I uh, attach a couple of RG RJ um, forty five connectors, and I wire them in the exactly same way that they are wired in uh, this part of the uh, microphone. So following the same connection here. Uh, what I found also, uh, like it looks like it's a defect of um, mm. from the man manufacturer, is that the um, the audio was not using the shielded uh, connection that is provided into this cable. So this cable has a shielded, only one wire is shielded, and the audio was not coming through that wire, was coming through, through some different uh, wire. So... At the beginning, I left it as is, but once I finished the project and everything was working fine, the last thing I did is to um, uh, to create another um, modification in here, and I uh, crossed uh, those two cables, uh, so the audio now was coming through the shielded wire. So here you can see the, um, the perf board that I use as a base, some headers that you will need, the Tinsy uh, 4.0 and the audio shield with the uh, codec uh, chip in here and the um, SD card which I use to store the settings. So here you can see the perf board. In the perf board I uh, set up the, um, the connections, the headers for the Tinsy and also set up the headers for, those are the headers for the encoder, 
Um, those are the headers for the power, for the power for the encoder and the power for the screen. Those are 3.3 volts um, that are coming from the regulator from the TNC uh, for the encoder and the screen. This is the connector, the digital connection, um, serial connection for the screen. And here is the input audio input for the isolation transformer and the audio output of the isolation transformer. So here uh, I'm doing a test uh, of the unit. Uh, everything seems to be working fine using the, the perf board. And the next step uh, was to build the power uh, or the voltage regulator because I want to feed the uh, preamp directly from the um, power supply from the radio that feeds the radio um, and, and has no absolutely no connection to the computer. When it's connected via USB to the um, to the computer, you have to make sure that uh, you are not connecting the power. Uh, uh, from the um, power supply from the radio otherwise that will damage your USB in the computer so for that I use um, an L uh, LM317 or uh, um, that has a couple of, of resistors to adjust the um, voltage to 5 volts uh, but uh, if you um, if you prefer to use a 7805 you can use that as well so in here is when I set it up on the perf board and I run a test first with a 9 volts battery and I'm is, is regulating 9 volts to 5.1 volts. Here I connected now everything that I know it works uh, because in here I was testing without any connection just to make sure I will not uh, damage any component. And here I already connected to my power supply and uh, I put it uh, the circuit back on the um, perf board and uh, I'm getting a little bit higher voltage when using the power supply but still good 5.1 volts is still good for the TNC and uh, this is um, the PVC sheet that I used to to build the box how I got this PVC sheet is I got um, a 4 inch a water pipe from uh, um, Home Depot, and then I um, I cut up um, a length of uh, of um, of that pipe, and I um, I put it on the oven at 300 degrees, and once it got soft, I cut it uh, in the long way, and then I flatten the the piece of uh, of uh, PVC and converted in a sheet of PVC. So after after that, I cut the the size of the box. As you can see here, the the wall is like a three millimeters, which is uh, uh, is, is is a little bit uh, on the thick side. Um, I seen others uh, done the same with a two millimeter uh, PVC. A two millimeter um, wall, wall will be easier to um, do the, the the machining of the box. So in in this uh, picture, you can see now um, the, um, the the board mounted into the box uh, with all the um, the cables connected to the um, to the screen and to the encoder, and I also add a small um, uh, heat sink to the regulator because it was warming up uh, a little bit and this is um, now um, a top view when I after I add the um, RG45 um, jacks uh, for the um, the connections the in, mic in and mic out as I wrote in here uh, here is the pin number one this is the pin number eight for the RG45 and um, some connections like for example one goes straight to one and so on and so forth as you can see here uh, but the microphone is coming into the audio shield mic input in here and the, the microphone out is coming from the isolation transformer from the bottom into this connection in here. 
One of the reasons that I choose to use this type of uh, connectors with the uh, screws is if I change the radio or if I want to use the preamp with any other radio, it's very easy to rewire the input and output to match any microphone and any radio. Very simple to use and, and you don't need to desolder anything. Just use a screwdriver. Finally, you can see here, uh, now the unit connected to the radio here in the back, uh, the input coming from this uh, um, RG45 on the left and the output from this one into the radio with this cable. And now uh, you have a, a better picture here from the top where you can see now uh, also all the connections and how everything was set up. Uh, and now, in this picture, this is a very important lesson I learned is um, originally I didn't put the uh, uh, 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitors for the uh, RF um, filtering and I found when I was uh, doing the first test, the, the first runs, that uh, I was getting a lot of R RF into the circuit and on you know, my app a lot of uh, distortion and interference from RF. Um, uh, first, I, what I did, I had this one on the input and this one on the output, thinking that that was uh, the sources, but that didn't solve the problem. I found that after I had this one here on the jumper that goes from the output, uh, from the audio board into the isolation transformer, you can see uh, there is one here and one there, that uh, cured the RF uh, interference that, uh, and um, distortion that I was having. And after that, I didn't have any more problems. One more thing that you can see now in this picture is uh, I rewire the, um, the ground for the PTT uh, connection because uh, this uh, radio and this microphone, uh, when you press the PTT button, it closes the switch in for the PTT line into ground. And originally, um, uh, the the ground was shared by the audio signal. And when you do that, uh, it causes a lot of interference on the audio signal. So I separate the two grounds for the audio signal and the PTT signal. And now the white cable is, is, uh, is doing the shortening of the ground for the PTT into this uh, pin. The, 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 this, these two pins are the pins used for the um, PTT push to talk. And here is a, now um, a view from the front with the spectrum uh, analyzer on the screen and a knob attached to the um, encoder. And that's it. Uh, um, this is everything uh, for this video. I hope uh, you like it. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, leave it on the comments below. I will uh, reply as soon as possible. Uh, I will share also a link to, to the code that I use uh, in case that you want to reuse the same code uh, for this project. And um, if you like this video, please uh, um, click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, that is telling me that you like uh, the content that I, that I am uploading for you. And thank you so much for watching and until the next time.